welcome back. In the last lecture, we have seen that uh, if f n is a fair kernel, then f convolution of f n converges pointwise to f of x naught if f is continuous at x naught and if if f is continuous function to pi periodic continuous function then f convolution of f n of x converges to f of x uniformly. So, there are certain basic properties of the fair kernel enabled us to derive this result and as an application we have seen that if we have f hat then we can reconstruct our f trigonometric polynomial they are dense uniformly in the space of continuous function and a very important result if f hat is equal to g hat at every point of uh, z then f has to be equal to g. So, that is the uniqueness of the Fourier transform. So, now if we try to generalize the properties of the fair kernel what we had seen, let us see what happened, what do I mean by that. Uh, a family of kernels k n n equal to 1 to infinity. They are the 2 pi periodic functions on minus pi to pi is said to be a good kernel or an approximate identity if the following conditions are satisfied 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi k n x d x is equal to 1. Secondly, 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi mod of k n of x d x is lesser equal to m for some constant m. This is for all n and third for every delta positive integral mod of x greater than delta greater or equal to delta mod k n x d x this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. If these three properties are satisfied by a sequence or a family of functions k n, then we say that family to be a good family or an approximate identity. Why it is an approximate identity? Because we have seen that under convolution c 0 1 if I take two functions and convolve them, they have uh, they are continuous and then one would like to ask does it have an identity and it will never have an identity because the Fourier transform vanishes to 0. So, but that is how here what we are we are approximating with 
a family k n in particular f n uh, f by a convolution. So, exactly by following the idea of the proof of fair theorem, we can get this let f is a 2 pi periodic Riemann integrable function. If f is continuous at x naught, then f convolution of k n of x naught, this converges to f of x naught. Moreover, if f is uniform, if f is continuous on minus pi to pi, then the convergence because uh, for every point in x by the previous statement, this is going to uh, this f convolution of k n of x converges to f of x for all x in minus pi to pi. But if we are dealing with a continuous function, then we will get that the convergence is uniform. Okay, the proof uh, is uh, basically um, exactly the same as that of the Fair's theorem. So, it is not a very bad idea to repeat the proof. Uh, let f be continuous at x naught, then we want to show f convolution of k n of x naught minus f of x naught. This is 1 by 2 pi f of x minus of y k n of y dy. Now, minus of f of x naught. So, now what I can do is that multiply 2 pi and divide by pi 1 by 2 pi if I take it out this is minus pi to pi k n of y dy. So, this is uh, lesser equal to like in the fair theorem we can break this minus mod of f of x minus of y uh, this is x naught x naught minus of y minus of f of x naught into mod k n y. Here, we do not know whether k n is a positive uh, function or not, but that is not going to matter. This is minus pi to pi. And again, by the continuity of the f for every epsilon positive, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that mod of y less than delta will imply less than epsilon. So, now with this delta we take this is equal to 1 by 2 pi and we break the integral into mod y less than delta plus mod y greater or equal to delta and then within the integral that is there is uh, mod f of x naught minus y minus of f of x naught k n of y. Okay. So, in the first integral the continuity of f is going to give us the smallness and in the second integral we will pull out the 
bound for f. So, that will be 2 times the supremum of mod of f of x will come out and f is a remain integrable function and it is bounded and then we are left with. So, this is uh, lesser equal to some epsilon into minus pi to pi mod of k n of y dy that is the first integral and the second integral is going to be lesser equal to twice the bound of f Now, while well in the choice of delta, we can always take that and this is lesser equal to m that is what is our assumption of a good kernel is. So, we can make it 2 by m. Now, here this is less than epsilon and this one second term goes to 0 as n becomes large. Thus, f convolution of k n at x naught converges to f of x naught. Exactly the same proof, it is just a bookkeeping of the proof of fair kernel. Uh, and if it is a continuous, if f is a continuous function here, this existence of delta may not depend on any x naught. Therefore, what we are going to get is that this is a uniform continuous function. So, hence the convergence is going to be uniform. Okay. So, uh, that is, uh, so now what are the other examples of good kernel? Let us take v n of x is equal to 2 f 2 n minus of f n. So, now what is uh, interesting about uh, this family? Now, for each n, if we look at, recall that f n hat is equal to 1 minus mod n by n, if mod n is lesser equal to n and 0 otherwise. Therefore, v n hat, v n hat is going to be, let us draw the diagram, here I have n, here I have 2 n, here minus of n and minus of 2 n. So, v n hat at n by the linearity of the Fourier transform, we have twice f 2 n hat at n minus f n hat at n. Now, when if our small n is lying between minus of n to n, then both f 2 n hat is also 1 minus mod n by 2 n, right. So, therefore, 2 n hat, this is going to be 1 minus mod n by 2 n if mod n is lesser equal to 2 n in this. So, now if mod n is less than n, this is mod n by 2 n. So, now v n hat is equal to 2 times 1 minus mod n by 2 n minus f n hat is 1 minus mod n by n. Now, if you take this, then this is 2 minus 1 which is going to be 1 here, this entire. Now, between n and after 2 n, f 2 n hat is 0 and also f n hat is 0, therefore, that difference is 0. So, now let me do 
change of color. This is 1 here and this is 0 on this side. Now, in this side between n and 2 n f n hat is 0. So, this is nothing but 1 2 times f 2 n hat. So, therefore, at a 2 n this is 0. So, this is something like this. So, the Fourier transform of this v n is going to look like this and this is very useful at certain stage we will be using this uh, kernel instead of the fair kernel. So, this is one example another example of a good kernel. So, now some uh, another important example Remember that in this example, we will see that when we are talking about the good kernel here, we have taken it is a family to be a countable family, but not necessarily that we need to have a countable family. So, now define P r theta, this is equal to summation over n equal to minus infinity to infinity r to the power mod n e to the power i n theta, where 0 is less or equal to r is less than 1. So, this uh, you can see that if I consider a unit disk, then at each point can in the polar coordinate can be represented by r theta and so this you can think of that this is a function which is defined on the open unit disk. Now, let us see and this is because r is less than 1, so this infinite series converges, so we do not have any problem with that. Now, 1 over 2 pi minus pi to pi p r theta d theta this is equal to 1 because this is absolutely summable series we can pull the sum out of the integral and varies over z and uh, r to the power mod n is independent of theta can come out we are left with minus pi to pi e to the power i n theta d theta. And we know that this integral is going to survive only when n is equal to 0 and for other values of n this integral is will vanish. So, this becomes nothing but 1. Okay, the first property of the good kernel is satisfied even though here this is true for all r. Now, now next one, next condition for good kernel to be the we need to have the control over the integral of the modulus of that function. In the case of uh, fair kernel, we saw that the fair kernel is a non-negative uh, function, therefore, we did not have any problem and uh, then we impose the condition that the modulus of the kernel is lesser equal to some constant m for every n then uh, so now what is this so let me call it as a lemma p r theta this is equal to 1 minus of r square by 1 minus 2 r cos theta plus r square for r belongs to 0 and 1. So, as you can see that obviously, if r is less than 1, then this is going to be and cos theta varies between minus 1 to 1. So, therefore, we get 
that p r theta is positive as a simple consequence of this lemma. If we prove this identity, then we can prove that 1 over 2 pi integral minus pi 2 pi mod p r theta d theta is going to be equal to 1. So, the proof of this is simple p u this is just the complex number complex algebra. So, this is I can write this as minus infinity to minus of 1 r to the power mod n e to the power i n theta plus summation over uh, n equal to 1 to infinity r to the power n e to the power i n theta and 0 term is going to be 1 ok n equal to 0. Now, this becomes 1 to infinity r to the power minus of n e to the power uh, this is minus i n theta and this is minus n mod. So, which means is equal to n we can replace this by n plus summation over n equal to 1 to infinity r to the power n e to the power i n theta plus 1. Now, r is a positive non negative number which is strictly less than 1. Therefore, both the series are geometric series and we can sum them. So, now what it is missing over n equal to 0 term. So, therefore, if I write this as this is 1 minus r to the power r into e to the power minus of i theta and then minus of 1 plus 1 by 1 minus r e to the power i theta then this is minus of 1 plus 1 because to add and subtract the 0th term. So, this is equal to and uh, this is minus of 1. So, this is equal to if we do simple addition then what we have got this is this is 1 and minus r e to the power i theta then mi minus r e to the power minus of i theta. So, that is going to be 2 r cos theta and this into this is plus r square and then this is 1 minus r e to the power i theta plus 1 minus r e to the power minus of i theta and then this is uh, then minus of 1 minus r e to the power i theta uh, then minus r e to the power minus of i theta and then this is minus r plus r square. This is nothing but 1 minus of r square divided by 1 minus 2 r cos theta plus r square. So, the second property of p r this family to be a good kernel is also satisfied. So, this basically will imply 1 over 2 pi minus pi to pi mod of p r theta d theta this is equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi p r theta d theta and this is a not because this is a non negative quantity. So, this is equal to 1. So, this is the second condition what we have got. Now, the most important part is also the third condition. So, the third condition says that away from the origin 
if n goes to infinity, then this integral of k n has to be small, it goes to 0. Here, instead of n goes to infinity, what we would like to see that what happens when r goes to 1. So, for delta positive limit r goes to 1 minus 1 by uh, minus pi to pi uh, no yes. mod theta greater or equal to delta p r theta d theta this has, will be 0. Okay. So, let us uh, see one as we know the numerator is 1 minus r square. So, when r goes to 1 the numerator is going to 0. Now, the denominator we would like to see that when r goes to 1 it should not it if we can say that it has an upper bound then we are done. So, 1 minus 2 r cos theta plus r square this is equal to uh, 1 minus r whole square I am adding minus 2 r plus 2 r then plus 2 r if I am taking it common 1 minus cos theta. So, 1 minus cos theta this is going to be 1 minus of r r whole square plus 4 r sin square theta by 2. Now, in this region minus pi to pi sin theta mod or sin square theta will go something like this Now, theta is here. So, now if mod theta is greater than uh, theta and uh, less than pi minus delta, this is delta, then obviously, sin square theta is going to be greater than. So, this is 1 minus and uh, if theta lies between pi minus theta greater than a uh, delta greater than delta, this is 1 minus of r square plus 4 r sin square delta by 2 and if r goes to 1, then this thing goes to uh, then 1 over this. So, p r theta is lesser equal to 1 minus of r square by 1 minus of r square plus 4 r sin square delta by 2. Now, this goes to 0 as r goes to 1 this is 0 this is 4 sin square delta by 2 which is a positive number and 1 minus r square it goes to 0. So, the third condition for this family to be a good kernel is there good kernel. So, now this is a family which is not a countable family, but still it satisfies all the properties to be a good kernel. Thank you.